Hey guys, Simply Betty here. Today, I'm gonna do something kinda stupid. <laughs> I am breaking perfectly good fish tanks today, just for fun. Okay, not just for fun because I'm not a crazy person. This is a side project I've been planning for a while. These are 20 gallon long tanks that are extras of mine that were just sort of sitting around doing nothing. So uh, now they're going to be turned into vertical terrariums for a really cool creature I have coming up in my next video. Who's that Pokemon? It's Reptile. I'm essentially making some DIY exoterra type reptile enclosures just because. I'm starting with 20 gallon long fish tanks because this is going to be for an arboreal species. So I want it to be nice and tall with lots of places to climb upwards. And my plan is to remove the top glass panel completely without removing or breaking the black plastic frame that comes on the fish tanks. So that's why I'm breaking this glass. It's because I don't want to go through the hassle of removing the, the black trim and possibly breaking it because I really need that intact. Then I'll add a screen there that will work um, with a heat lamp and a UV lamp and also provide really good ventilation. So why go through the hassle of converting these fish tanks and breaking a bunch of glass just to make some terrariums? Well, I figure it was worth a try since the cost would be a lot lower than ordering a similarly sized exoterra terrarium. I will go over a cost comparison later in the video and then you can see for yourself if it was worth it or not. So here's how I did it. Before I broke the glass panel from the sides of these tanks, I removed as much silicone as I could with a razor blade from the side that I was gonna remove. Then after I broke the glass out with a hammer and cleaned up all the shards that were all over my garage, although my plastic tub uh, caught most of them, I went over the silicone areas again to make it as smooth as possible. I also used some sandpaper on the edges to just make sure that any sort of sharp, dangerous, nasty edges would be dulled. When I was done, I had two 20 gallon long tanks with a side really cleanly removed and the frames were intact, which is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. I'll be making and siliconing into place my own screen tops. This way I can have a well ventilated arboreal setup and have a place for my heat lamp to sit as well as my UV lamp because I want uh, both of these things for this species. I made my screen top next using a window screen kit that I found at my local hardware store. I cut the pieces of aluminum that it comes with to the sizes that I wanted and I fastened them together into squares using the corner pieces that come with the kit plus a few extras that I bought to make the screen for the second tank. After I was happy with those, I spray painted the metal a flat black uh, to match the frame of the tank, just so it looked nice and like it belonged. I gave the tanks a really good scrub out in the yard with some dish soap, and I paid really close attention to all the areas where there was silicone. After I broke out the glass, there were a lot of just microscopic shards of glass that were stuck to the silicone after, after I broke out the panel. Even after I cleaned it all up and, and I vacuumed it out with a shop vac, I still felt like I had to wash it by hand and really hose it out to ensure that there was no glass bits left anywhere in these tanks. I'm gonna do one last cleanup because some of them still have some hard water stains. I want those gone. Next was my solution for the door of the terrarium. These doors are not DIY. I actually ordered them from iheartgeckos.com where you can get pre-made doors for these vertically converted fish tanks so you can turn them into terrariums and vivariums. I could have done it DIY to save a bit of money, but the time savings to get a pre-made door were definitely worth it for me, uh, especially considering that I was really pregnant at the time and I was doing this and I was a tired grump -a lump The doors silicone into place on the intact frame, so I added the doors to both tanks and I let them cure overnight before moving on to the next step of adding on the screen tops. Before I added the screen tops, I cleaned up the edges again using acetone to just help remove any silicone residue. The tops looked pretty nice after that coat of flat black spray paint, so I fitted them to make sure that they were good to go before adding my screen. I ended up using a black fiberglass screen because it's what I had on hand and it was pretty cheap. I checked the specs for fiberglass screen online to make sure it would hold up to a heat lamp being close to it or even on top of it. It can. I siliconed those into place as well. 
Here is my result, two vertically converted aquariums that are now suited to be terrariums for a certain adorable reptile species that I'll be going over in my next video. I like these doors. They were pretty inexpensive and I like that there are not any like bars or supports on the front blocking the view. The front's completely transparent. The doors do have ventilation holes and some people might be wondering why I went through the effort of removing the top panel and replacing it with a screen top. I did that to ensure good ventilation, but also to make sure that a UV lamp would be effective, you know, and not passing through glass. This way, I can also use a heat lamp, something that you also don't use on top of glass, so I can ensure proper temperatures. If I have a hard time regulating humidity with the open top, um, or if I ever don't need the heat lamp or the UV light someday, I can always add a piece of glass or pexiglass or acrylic on top of the screen um, to help keep in moisture. Or I could remove the screen top completely and just silicone in a piece of glass, which would sort of nullify all the work I just did, but oh well. So now let's do a cost comparison. Was it worth it? The tanks themselves were $20 each. The doors were 38 the screen kit wasn't very much, I'm going to say it was like $5. The fiberglass screen was like $2. I'm not going to factor in the silicone because I already had it. So these tanks come to about $65 each. I'll be comparing these to a similarly sized Exoterra, the small extra tall, which is 18 by 18 by 36, while the 20 gallon vertical conversion is like 12 by 12 by 30, so it is smaller. The lowest price I could find for this Exoterra was $280 after shipping costs. So my DIY option is a little smaller, but it's also about $215 less expensive. If I wanted to get two Exoterras for my two new additions, they would have cost $560. But instead, my total cost for two slightly smaller terrariums was $130. So I saved $430 by doing what I did. So was it worth the effort? Some people might say, nope, I love my Exoterras and I like how well built they are and I love spending money on them. But I have to say it was worth it for me for what these are going to be used for. There are cons when comparing the 20 gallon long vertical conversion to the similarly sized Exoterra like the fact that the Exoterra is a little bit bigger in both dimensions, and it also requires substantially less effort to just buy, but it's still $215 more. So this was a good experience. I might be trying this again in the future with a larger aquarium that's gonna be just have bigger dimensions, maybe. I have two little kids now, a baby and a young child, and the idea of paying a little extra money and saving lots and lots of time and effort uh, really appeals to me. So I guess time will tell just how I feel and what I decide to do. Some time has passed um, since I recorded this, since I actually made the terrariums, um, because that was before I had my baby. Um, I was filming lots of fun projects, but I wasn't really editing them, and then I got tired and cranky, and I went through the late pregnancy exhaustion and uh, I basically didn't make the video. So I have this backlog of videos that I'm going back and I'm editing and that I'll be releasing very shortly. Pretty regular schedule now, I'm pretty sure. So I've actually had this uh, little secret reptile for months now and I'm really excited to share them because I think they're one of my favorite little uh, reptiles of all time. You can try to guess. If anybody has a guess on what I got, go ahead and write it in the comments and you can just see if you were right. If you already know, don't guess. That's totally cheating. I'll know if you cheated. These 20 gallon long vertical converted aquariums, they were more meant to be like a quarantine type tank. Just an area for me to put my little pets in for a couple months just to hang out in there, just to us, so I could make sure they go through a little quarantine period and that they're safe and sound. And that's why I plan on making a bigger tank coming up here soon, because I would like to put the pair in together. But some time does need to pass before that happens. So guys, what did you think about this video? What do you think about doing the vertically converted aquariums and how they look? Would you prefer to put in the extra effort and save a bunch of money by kind of doing things yourself or would you rather just 
take it easy and buy something like a nice pre-made terrarium like an exoterra. What would you rather do? So thanks so much for watching guys. Be sure to like and subscribe and maybe even share this video to your reptile loving friends. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.